Hey, Linus. Are you still running late? I'm about to jump in the tub with Ivy and get ready for bed. We can't wait up any longer. <sighs> sorry, babe. I totally forgot to message you. I'm really sorry. The boss gave me overtime again today. What? But you promised to watch Ivy today. I know, I'm sorry. I'll watch it tomorrow instead. I really mean it this time. I'll stay with her till she falls asleep. You better follow through this time, Linus. I'm sick of you cancelling on me. Yeah, I'm serious. I'll be back on time tomorrow, I promise. If he tries getting me to do overtime again, I'll say no. Fine. Well, in that case, I forgive you for today. I'm getting so big these days, it's hard to move around. I knew being pregnant would be a cakewalk, but I'm surprised how hard it actually is. I'm worried I might slip over getting out of the bathtub or something. It's hard to wash myself, let alone take care of Ivy, too. In fact, I can barely keep up with her at all. I'm no match for a five-year-old girl, she's like a little rocket. I guess you are nine months gone. Could totally see that little mischief maker running rings around you. This is just the warm up, though. Let's not forget our child rearing quota is set to double soon. I really shouldn't complain about Ivy given what's on the way. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. My sister messaged me. She offered to come over to help around the house after the baby's born. Wow, well, really? She's a star. That's going to be a huge weight off our shoulders. You've met my sister before, right? Your sister? Uh, oh, now that you mention it, I have. She said you bought her a meal. Sorry if it was any trouble. I know what she can be like. Eh, it was nothing really, don't swear. All I did was buy her a burger from some budget family restaurant. I didn't break the bank or anything. Really? I hate to say this, Linus, but if you have enough free time to be taking my sister out for burgers, I wish you'd start coming home from work on time. I said I'm sorry, babe. Just kidding. I bet she forced you to take her, right? She has a way of always getting what she wants. She's the strongest world person I know. She probably knew you wouldn't know how to refuse her. Yeah, uh, it was exactly like you said, babe. She twisted my arm. <laughs> oh, did you think of a name of the baby yet? I did think of a few candidates. But I can't decide for the life of me. Who knew picking a name would be so hard? What about you? Yeah, I came up with a few good ones too. If it's a boy, I think we should call him Balthazar. Balthazar? Am I giving birth to a freaking demon? I really think we should go with something a little more normal, Linus. Can you imagine it? The bullying would never end. Surely it's the opposite. Think about it. No one messes with a kid named Balthazar. He'd be the king of the playground. I guess I'm not dead set on it, though. Just an idea. Sorry, honey. I hope you don't feel let down. I know you've been trying hard to come up with something, because I'm so indecisive. You know, I read an interesting article lately that said boys with one-syllable names are more likely to become CEOs. Not like he has to be a CEO or anything, but I do think it'd be nice if he had a name that boosted his chances of getting success in the world. I tell you what, let's both think on it a little longer. We can share what we come up with and decide on it together. You care about the number of syllables? I get that it might sound excessive, but I don't see any harm in it if it's a name we like and it helps his chances of getting along in the world. Here, I just looked up the figures. It says that statistically, boys earn on average $3,600 less a year for every extra syllable in their name. Don't worry, I'm fully aware of how materialistic I probably sound. I just think it'd be cool if we could name our boy scientifically, you know? Linus, am I weird? I'd be lying if I said you weren't, babe. It's cool, though. We knew that already. I really don't think syllables are that important, though. It's not like he absolutely has to have a one-syllable name or anything. But this is our son we're talking about. 
Surely we should do everything we possibly can to help him get ahead in life. Every I dotted, every T crossed. I'm surprised you're so anxious over all this. Surely this being baby number two puts your mind at rest a little. I might have more of an idea what to expect now, but childbirth is difficult, full stop. Plus, this is our first boy. I'm a little nervous about him being bigger than Ivy, and if he inherits your big melon head on top of that, I'm in for a world of hurt. Hey, that wasn't called for. I'll get you back for that one. Now you'll be fine though, babe, really. I'll always be here for you to bring him up. Right. Anything I can't do, I'll leave in the hands of his clever and capable dad. Yep, leave it to me. I feel bad about how things have been lately, though. Things have been so crazy at the office, I'm leaving you to do pretty much everything. I know work has been busy lately, and that's not your fault, but I do wish you to make an effort to make a little more time for Ivy. That's going to be doubly so when the next one's born. Ivy started saying she misses you and asks why you're never around a few weeks back. Damn, am I really at the office that much? You barely spend any time with her. She'll forget you if you're not careful. Will you make sure to prioritize Ivy when our son's born? I'm gonna have my hands full with him. Apparently, it's not uncommon for the firstborn to get jealous and feel lonely when their new little sibling comes into the scene and suddenly starts stealing all their attention. I want us to create the kind of environment that makes it easy for her to accept her little brother and avoid her holding any negative feelings towards him. Mm, that's a good point. You're right. Ah, sorry, the boss is shouting at me. I have to get back to work now. No problem, honey. Sorry for keeping you. Good luck. I hope you manage to get out before midnight. Hey, Linus. You did book the day off work for the day after tomorrow, didn't you? Of course I did. Like I'll go to work on your due date. What do you take me for? I booked the whole week off. Great. Thanks, honey. I'm glad to hear that. I was worried you might forget with how busy you've been lately. No way. There's nothing more important to me. Besides, it's going to watch all of you from at the office. Thank you. I put all of the necessary stuff together to make it as easy as possible for you. I wrote our kindergarten schedule and a to-do list in your notepad. Thanks, that's a big help. Oh, but what should I do if she's asleep? Should I wake her up? There's no rush. You don't have to wake her. Just bring her when she wakes up. But I want to see my son as soon as I can. Don't worry. I'll send you some pics straight away. Remember to let your mom know when he's been born, too. She said she wanted you to bring her to the hospital. What? My mom said that? Oh, why can't she go herself? She drives more than anyone I know. Sure, she used to drive a lot, but apparently she's been feeling nervous out on the road lately. She says she limits her time in the car to short trips now. She mainly gets around with trains and buses these days. The roads are a lot busier at this time of year, so I get where she's coming from. You run into some total lunatic sometimes, and makes you wonder how they even got licenses. She does. You sure know a lot about my mom. And why do you think that is? Someone never messages her, so she always messages me instead. You're a grown man, Linus. You need to stop leaving your own mom on red. At least start acknowledging she exists. But well, she drones on like a goddamn record. I'll worry I'll fall asleep if I read the essay she sends me. But this is your mom we're talking about here. It's not like she has many people to talk to. She probably gets lonely. Would it really hurt to speak to her every now and then? You even turned her down when she offered to come and stay with us after the birth to help out with the kids and the housework. I felt so guilty you wouldn't believe. To be honest, I still do. What's worse, you made me turn her down. Couldn't you at least have done it yourself? Sorry. I'm not laughing, Linus. Jeez, come on, babe. I'd never get a break if my mom lived with us. 
But you will when my sister moves in. She's a million times worse. Nah, I'm sure I'll get to relax with Helen around. She's super kind and cooks a mean steak. How do you know that? Has she cooked for you before? No, but I got to know her a little when I took her out for that burger. She showed me a bunch of pics of the meal she made on her peep book page. I got the impression she really enjoys cooking. Yeah, apparently she cooks for her boyfriend every day. I can vouch. She's really talented. She's passionate about cooking ever since she was a teenager. I gotta say, though, I think your mom's cooking is even better. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm bored of it. That's mean. If you say that about your mom's masterpieces, what hope is there for me? If that's what you think, I'm worried you'll get bored of my cooking soon, too. No way, babe. You've got the most delicious meals on the planet. Who was it that said my repertoire was too small? Go on, remind me. I told you, that was just a joke. If you say so. We can go with that if it makes you feel better. Oh, I almost forgot. Would you mind picking up some more bottled water on the way home from work? Um, about that. You see, babe, the thing is, I'm gonna be home late from work again. What? But you said you'd be home on time last night. I'm so sorry. Linus, are you sure you have my due date booked off? You are going to be home to watch Ivy, right? It's a miracle you managed to book a whole week off when things are this hectic. I don't think I've ever known anyone as busy as you these past few months. Relax, it's fine. As long as the birth goes ahead as planned, I'll be able to watch Ivy no problem. I really hope you will. Will you have your mom on standby to watch her in case there's some kind of emergency and you have to go in on short notice? I won't take no for an answer on this one, even if you are allergic to messaging your mom. Fine, I will. We can't risk Ivy being left alone. Right. My mind will be at rest once your mom knows. Chill, you can count on me. I'll take good care of her while you're in hospital, trust me. Wendy, get yourself home immediately. Huh? Joan, what's going on? Can't you read? I just told you to get yourself home immediately. Move. To the house? Where else would home mean? I can't believe you left your five-year-old daughter home alone. You have no right to be a mother. Huh? I'm about to give birth. There's no way I can come home right now. Lies! I just saw you go into that bar by the station. And please, why would you be on your phone if you were able to give birth? They have me on a bunch of meds, so it's gonna be mostly painless. The distraction of my phone is helping keep me calm, actually. Linus is home, right? Do you think I'd be this angry if he was? My son's nowhere to be seen. Is he still at work? Anyway, you can't drop the act. I saw you. I saw you go into that bar. I thought drinking while being heavily pregnant was bad enough. But to think you left your five-year-old daughter home alone to do it. I'm in the hospital, I swear on my life. Please believe me. It's my due date today, surely you know that. Huh? Wait a sec. No way. That woman I saw going to the bar? Was it your sister? I remember you telling me you had a twin. Probably. I mean, it had to be. Was she heavily pregnant? Oh my god, I'm so sorry, Wendy. I only saw her face. Now that you mention it, I think she might have been slim. Don't worry about it. Me and her are identical twins. People get us mixed up all the time. But what's all this about Ivy being on her own? Is Lannis really not home? I searched the place from top to bottom, but he was nowhere to be seen. I was there for at least ten minutes, so we can't have gone to the store or anything. I was walking home from the station after work. That's when I saw your sister going to the bar. Then I saw Ivy out walking on her own. What? Ivy was outside alone? Right. That's why I was so astonished. To be honest, I saw Red. 
I'm having a planned birth under anesthetic, so I was admitted to the hospital this morning. This has all been scheduled for weeks now. Linus said he was taking a week off work so he could be home to watch Ivy and spend some time with me and the baby after the birth. There's absolutely no reason he shouldn't be home. This makes no sense. What? Then what the hell is he playing at? Hang hold on, dear. I'll call him. Hang on a sec, Joan. Don't call him just yet. I'm gonna send my mom over to the house. Someone needs to be there to watch Ivy. Would you mind heading back over to that bar you saw my sister go into to check if she's still there? Huh? I have a hunch. I think Linus might be with my sister. But why on earth? I can't tell you why. I just have this gut feeling. Okay. Leave this to me and your mother. You just focus on giving birth to your son now, okay? I know this is the last thing you needed today, and it might be difficult to keep your mind off it. But I want you to know we're all here for you, and you have nothing to worry about. Ivy's in safe hands. Wendy, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. There's no excuse for what I did. I'm sure you already heard from both of our moms. But I want a divorce. No, wait a sec! Let's at least talk things through first. Talk things through? What would be the point in that? Oh, you mean about the child support and compensation? Nah, not that. I mean, about saving our marriage. Our marriage is beyond saving. You cheated on me with my twin sister. I thought it was weird how she had a boyfriend all this time, but I'd never seen him or even any pictures. Turns out it was my own freaking husband. How could you do this to me? I feel broken. Not only did you cheat on me with my sister, but you abandoned me while I was giving birth to our son and left Ivy all on her own at the house to get drunk with her. What choice do I have but divorce? Oh man, I really screwed up, didn't I? I can't tell you how sorry I am, babe. I'm so disgusted with myself, you wouldn't believe. You deserve better. I'm so sorry. Please, babe, you know Ivy is really mature for a five-year-old. I thought she'd be fine on her own for a little while. It's not like I planned on being out all day. Whether she's mature or not, she's still five. Your mom found her wandering the street alone at night, for God's sake. She was so terrified in the house all on her own, she went out to try and find me. Do you have any idea how serious this is? Do you have any comprehension of what could have happened to her? I barely bear thinking about it. Did you even think it through? A five-year-old is more than capable of unlocking a door, you moron. What would we have done if your mom didn't find her? I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't even begin to cut it. You did the worst thing imaginable as a husband and as a father. You're so despicable, I'm finding it difficult to talk with you right now. But our son was just born. Surely you can't raise them both on your own. It beats raising him with a cheating lowlife who left our daughter all on her own to get drunk with his lover, who just so happened to be my freaking sister. I'll take being a single mother over that any day. I mean, financially, how are you going to cope without my salary? Easy. You're going to send me child support. The silver lining here is that you're going to be legally obligated to send me enough money that me, Ivy, and our son can all live comfortably. And never want for anything until they're both adults. But it's going to be too hard for you to hold down a job while raising two kids on your own. You need to think this through. Please, baby. Don't ever call me baby again. You don't need to worry about me coping. We'll all be absolutely fine. I have the support of your mom and my family to rely on. And unlike you, they actually care about me and our children. They have my back, no matter what. Oh, by the way, Helen told me everything when I confronted her. She agreed to get out of mine and my family's lives for good. What? Don't tell me you're surprised. She cheated on me with my husband. Do you really think I can forgive her for that? I'm so sorry, I really mean it. 
I never meant to be unfaithful to you. Things just got out of hand is all. To say the truth, I was stressed. You were heavily pregnant and had been so long since we'd... Well, you know. The pressure just kept building and building and before long I could hardly take it anymore. That's when your sister invited me out for the meal. I knew you were identical twins, so I shouldn't have been nearly as surprised as I was. But Jesus, you really do look alike. It was like you were right there in front of me. If you think about it, what I did technically wasn't cheating. If anything, it just shows how attracted I am to you. You understand that, right, babe? Excuse me? Are you saying you cheated on me with my twin sister because she looks like me? You disgust me. I didn't think it was possible for you to be any more vile, but you just sunk to new depths. I can't believe this is happening. I did it because I love you, baby. I don't expect you to forgive me, but at least I want you to understand why it happened. I planned on ending things with her when Balthazar was born, I swear. Bullshit, scumbag. And our son is not called Balthazar, you freak. Stay out of our lives forever, you piece of lowlife trash. Wendy, please calm down. Don't do this. You're making a mistake. I'll do anything for you to forgive me, anything. Just tell me what you want and I'll do it. Words can't describe how sorry I am. Sorry doesn't even begin to cover it. Let me make it up to you, baby. I promise I'll never meet your sister again. I swear on my life. I don't care. Do as you please. We're getting a divorce, so you're free to continue your needy little romance. No, I don't want her. I want you. I can't bear to lose you. Please, rethink the divorce. I love you. I love you, I love Ivy, and I love our son. You're my world. Please believe me. We are where we are right now precisely because I was stupid enough to believe you. I never want to see your face again. You'll never live under the same roof as us for as long as you live. You've lost any right you had to be my husband, and you've lost your right to be a father. You say you love me. But if your love is so superficial that anyone who looks like me can get a share, then you can stick it up your ass. Needless to say, I swiftly divorced my piece of trash husband. He showed up at the house in tears, begging me to reconsider while clinging to my leg like a hysterical child. But he didn't have a single ally in either family, and his mom promptly showed up and dispatched him after giving him the dressing down of a lifetime. Apparently, he even told my sister Helen the same thing he told me. That the only reason he ever got involved with her was because we looked the same. With that, she was hit with the harsh reality that she was nothing more than a cheap fling to him. It's not an understatement to say it was the shock of her life. She must have known what she did to me was wrong, because after paying me a hefty sum in compensation, she completely disappeared. Still, I don't have any sympathy for her. She knew it was wrong from the get-go. She probably just thought she could get away with it. Ostracism from her family is her just desserts. As for Linus, he's currently living in our old house while working hard to keep on top of the monthly child support payments. He's always asking me if he can see the kids, but I can't bring myself to let the kind of man who would leave our daughter all on her own like that anywhere near either of them. As far as I'm concerned, they don't have a dad. Of course, things will be different if they say they want to meet him one day when they grow up. But until then, he's nothing but a distant memory. He seems to be under the impression that if he carries on paying child support, that I'll take him back one day. I can confidently state that that ain't gonna happen. He can live tormented by the pain of shame and regret for the rest of his life for all I care. As long as me and my children keep getting our money, I'm happy. I currently spend my days rushing around like a headless chicken, trying to keep on top of the mammoth responsibility of raising two small children. I don't plan on going back to work until Aiden has his first birthday. That way, I can spend as much time as possible with him and Ivy while he's tiny and still needs me the most. Even when I do go back to work, my family, as well as Joan, Linus's mom, 
have all said they'll be there to look after the kids whenever I need them to. I have the best support network in the world, and I couldn't feel more blessed. Of course, even when I am working, I'll spend all of my free time with my angels. I have to give them the love of two parents all by myself, so every second is precious. I'm gonna put every fiber of my being into raising them with so much love and care that they'll grow up one day and say, My childhood was amazing, even if I didn't have a dad. I know it's not always going to be easy, and I know the road ahead will be full of humps, bumps, challenges, and hurdles, but it'll all be worthwhile, because I have the two most amazing kids on the planet. We'll overcome all the obstacles that get in our way as one big happy family with plenty of laughter and joking along the way.